But I'm curious, uh, before we kind of move on to the next topic um, or aspect of fitness, if somebody is extremely metabolically dysregulated, they have type 2 diabetes or they're pre-diabetic, what do we know about the impact of exercise, in particular vigorous exercise on not just managing that condition, but but reversing it? Like if somebody's in full-blown type 2, you know, can they move that backwards? And if so, like how much? Yeah. Um, great question. So I'll start with prediabetes um, because I love talking about this study. There was like probably one of the largest studies done looking at the effect of exercise versus metformin on the progression of prediabetes into diabetes. And the reason I like this study is because there's so many people on metformin. I mean, it's a it's a pretty common you know, you you talk to someone with with type two diabetes, and they're they're on you know some generic. Well, now form. it's it's a longevity drug. Like people that are perfectly healthy are taking it. Yeah, yeah, and I I disagree with that, but um yes. So so then this is why I like talking about this study because exercise outperformed, and this was you know people were doing like moderate intensity exercise, but it outperformed metformin by almost like 30 to 40%, 40, maybe it was like closer to 40%. Um, so, you know, in, it outperformed it. In, in other words, it stopped the progression of prediabetes to type 2 diabetes much, much better than metformin did exercise, right? So I like that study because it really shows the power of exercise and how, no, you're not going to pill it up. It, it, you're not going to pill it up. It's it's not it's not the same. Um, there, are, of course, a lot of other studies that have shown that people that have type two diabetes can reverse their type two diabetes with exercise. I don't know by the magnitude because you know it's been so many years since I've looked at any of those studies. It's not something I've looked at recently, but I do think it is a powerful tool that we all have at our disposal that we should be using. And I'm saying we, I mean, I personally don't have type 2 diabetes, but like we as people, right? I mean, people with type 2 diabetes that think that they're sort of, you know, cursed with this disease that they can never escape, it's not necessarily true. You know, there are lifestyle modifications, including exercise probably being the most important. Mm -hmm. I don't think that anything, anything is more important than exercise in, in terms of health, but also in reverse, reversing type 2 diabetes. I think that's one of the biggest the biggest factors. And again, um, the more vigorous the intensity, it is better. Like, so for example, there's been studies that have shown, you know, if you take people that walk at a, you know, a, a brisk walk, and then you take those brisk walkers and then make them do intervals where they're really going fast and then, you know, and then brisk walking again, and then really going like like almost jogging, and then brisk walking. They again are have improved markers of insulin sensitivity, of glucose regulation, all those things if they're doing the intervals right. Mm -hmm. So, a, a vigorous exercise is really important with respect to, I would say, preventing the progression of diabetes, um, protecting you against getting diabetes, and also in terms of helping reverse type two diabetes. All of the above. Very, very important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, when you think about what people suffer from the most, it's, you know, being metabolically dysregulated, pre-diabetic, diabetic, it's cardiovascular disease, it's stroke, which is just a circulatory, you know, condition, disease, right? Um, and hypertension, like high blood pressure. So high blood pressure, I mean, obviously exercise is going to lower your blood pressure. Um, are there things about that aspect of this that are worth uh, kind of highlighting with respect to comparing like a sedentary of... person uh, at, and their risk, uh, you know, who 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 is sort of teetering on hypertension and what exercise can do to move the needle on that. Yes, yeah. There's been a quite a few studies. Um, there's one in particular. I think it was a meta analysis of multiple different randomized controlled trials, showing that it was like 30 minutes a day or something. Don't quote me on this. Maybe about 30 minutes, three times a week, I think. And it was you know, moderate to vigorous intensity exercise. Again, I think it was about three times a week over the course of, I don't know, a month or so. These people had improvements in their in their blood pressure that were comparable to antihypertensive treatments and antihypertensive drugs. So yeah, it can have druggable size effects, you know, if you are committed to improving your 
health, improving your blood pressure, you know, without taking medication. You have to be committed to it. Like you, it's not going to happen unless you put in the effort. But if you're willing to go three times a week, do 30 minutes of, you know, 80% max heart rate, let's say, you know, then then studies have shown that can have a, a an effect on your blood pressure that's comparable to taking an antihypertensive wow. drug. And I think that's profound, you know, when you're talking about druggable size effects here. And it's not just hypertension that it's that, that that's been shown, depression as well. It's been compared to a lot of different SSRIs. So there've been studies that have compared like running to people taking SSRIs and it was as good if not better at improving a variety of depressive symptoms in people with depression, running was yeah. compared to SSRIs. So yeah, again, yeah, yeah. now yeah, it's wild. It is. It's you yeah. know, you know, some people have like depression where they just can't even like get out of bed and do that run. I mean, I, that's like a whole other you know category. But there are people that that are have depressive symptoms. Maybe they don't have full blown like major depressive disorder, but you know they have anxiety or bouts of depression or, you know, and, and they can move, like they, they mm-hmm. can get enough willpower too. And so, I mean, it's really important. It's, it's, it's such an amazing tool that we have to improve so many aspects of our health. I did a lot of research in nutrition. And so it's, you know, it's something that I've always thought as the most important thing. And I'm not saying I don't think nutrition is important, but I think exercise is the most I think it's the most important thing. It seems to be the consensus. Yeah. yeah. I, I think, I mean, you, you can Across get- Across the board and in particular with respect to health span ex- extension. Right. Yeah. Uh, and and just even all cause mortality. I mean, I, I think you can, you can, you can get away with some other bad behaviors. Like, like I said, like the, the sleep, you know, if you're, if you're not getting enough good sleep, there's also studies showing that people that are, you know, getting fewer than seven hours of sleep a night, they have a higher all cause mortality than people that are getting greater than seven, like seven to nine hours a, a night. But if they're physically active and getting fewer than seven hours, guess what? They have the same all cause mortality mm-hmm. again. So exercise, I, I think really does forgive some of the sins and, um, that's where, you know, if you're going to cheat, you know, make sure you're physically active. But they do say you can't uh, exercise your way out of a bad diet, which makes me think about uh, elevated cholesterol. So if somebody has a high ApoB or their LDL is out of whack, maybe they're on a statin or their doctor has told them they should be. What is the impact of exercise versus making changes in your diet to deal with that specific thing. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, dietary changes for ApoB, LDL, I mean, that's that's a that's a big one for sure. I mean, because we know saturated fat, especially in combination with refined sugars, um, make make a disaster for ApoB and also for small dense LDL particles, which kind of are more prone to lodging into the arterial wall. And so, yes, diet is important and you, you can't exercise your way out of a bad diet in that regard. So you do, you do need to, to care for both for sure. But um, I do think like if someone held a gun to my head and said, choose one, what's the most important thing? I would, I would say exercise. Yeah. 